A while ago, I had a restaurant meal made up entirely of foam dishes, from foamed anchovies to foamed watermelon. Foam is more than trendy. It goes a lot deeper than the meringue on your pie. According to our guest, Sidney Perkowitz, a highly regarded expert on the properties of matter and a man fascinated by foam. Foam is about things you really wouldn't expect, like bread, protons, and the universe. So what's a nice physicist like you doing, staring into a cup of cappuccino and writing about foam? You know, we kind of have a warrant to look at anything that interests us in the physical world, and foam sure is interesting. From the scientific side, it's that uh, commonplace as it is, and ordinary as it seems, it really has unanswered questions lingering in it. How does a physicist define foam? The definition really is pretty simple. If I give you a, a pint of liquid or maybe a chunk of matter, and in that liquid or that matter, I mix in some bubbles of gas, I've given you a foam. That can be a plastic, like styrofoam, the cup. Absolutely. Right. Can, that's a solid foam. And then there's the foam on my cappuccino that disappears. And of course, that's the opposite extreme of foam. That's a liquid foam, a very tenuous thing, and yet that's part of its attraction, I think, that it's so fragile. Well, what makes one foam stronger than another? It comes down to whatever the additional uh, compound is in, in your mixture that is making the bubble walls sturdy. So some bubble walls, for instance, those made with what you find in egg white are especially sturdy. Meringue can do very well if you take good care of it. Now, what about some other edible foams? Beer is obvious. Everyone loves the head on a beer. Bread is a little less obvious, but it's fair to think of that as a solid foam. You're mixing together flour and the other ingredients with water. Then you put in something to raise the bread, typically yeast. As the yeast interacts with, with the other compounds, it releases gas, carbon dioxide. That gas makes bubbles. And then as the bread solidifies in the oven, those bubbles get frozen into place. Okay. Yes. I, I think I've got some sense about foam and food, but now you've got to make the leap for me. <laughs> what about oh. the cosmos? Oh, I'd love to do that. So let's start at the big end. If you look at how all the galaxies in the universe are arranged, they're arranged as if they made up the surfaces of enormous, enormous soap bubbles. It really would be fair to say that on the big scale, the universe looks like the head on a beer or the head on a cappuccino. Okay, now take me to the other end of the spectrum. Way down at the smallest scale you can think of, think a proton or an electron, you would see that down at that level, space-time, the stuff that it surrounds us, behave as if they're a foam. They change rapidly and radically and randomly, going away, being created. It's part of the order of things in our world. We're learning that the really subtle connections between life itself and foam, it seems, plays a role in that as a chapter in that story. Sydney, thank you so much.